Tonight, we'll continue in the spirit of what our pastor has been encouraging, as you remember about the uh, manifestation of the glory. But I want to title the few minutes I'm uh, guiding us into prayer, laying hold of the glory. Laying hold of the glory. You know, we've been confessing, Lord, show us your glory, your manifest presence, your power, and your goodness. And Pastor, in the last couple of weeks, I think two or three, he's really exhorted us about going forth for the glory. Because, and he has described what glory is. It's, it's the manifest presence of the Lord. It's, the, it's engaging with the supernatural. It's seeing the results of what uh, the presence of the Lord brings. Amen. And I, be, I remember last Tuesday, he, sp uh, he uh, spoke to us a lot on Colossians 3. And I will start with Colossians 3. I'm not sure which version I mean, but if I read it, you will know. They are, they are talking about the word of God. It says, since, I think this is the NLT. It says, since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven. Think about the things of heaven not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So the, why are we laying hold of the glory? Because we want it to manifest even to the others. We want the glory to manifest because we are believing God for huge harvest of the kingdom of God, which is souls. And what will transform them or what will entice them or what will uh, catch their eyes is when it manifests uh, among us. So this glory is a conduit that God will use to uh, populate his kingdom. The Passion Translation uh, translation says, yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities. To me, this talks about a determined thinking. I'm not just thinking. I am purposing to think about the realities of heaven. What are the realities of heaven? It's what we call, I remember uh, uh, one, one, in one of the conferences that Dr. Jerry did many years ago, it was being called Days of Heaven and Earth. And I think that's the one that enticed me to join VF. We used to be at KICC. Days of Heaven and Earth. And the speakers would describe what is in heaven. It's contrary to what is on earth. So when we are being told that we set our minds on the realities of heaven, it's because the more we focus on heaven, the more we, mari we are marinated with the glory of God. And the easier the glory manifests in our lives. So tonight, I'd like us to look at three keys that we should use to lay hold of his glory. Key number one is seeking his presence. Matthew 7, 7, in the Passion Translation says, Ask, and the gift is yours. That sounds very simple. <laughs> Ask, and the gift is yours. Seek, and you will discover. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For every persistent one who gets what he asks for, Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for, and everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. Does that tell you about not giving up? Yeah. If, see, the fact that to, there, there are levels of the glory that we haven't experienced does not mean we, it's not going to happen. It only means that there is an understanding that hasn't come to light in our lives. And therefore, we keep seeking. Worship long enough to bring his presence. That's why I encourage you that. Let not your tune deter you from worshiping. 
Worship long enough to bring your present. Stop running after the world. You know, sometimes we, we constrain our times and, and we compartalize our, our time. Uh, this uh, t- 10 minutes or five minutes, one song. One song and, two, and, and then prayer. And then, you know, if, if, if the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to worship, worship an hour. Worship. See, I, I mean, the beauty of worshiping is that you get and gross denate, you forget about what is happening. Do you remember what the, the scripture, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10 or either 2 Corinthians 10, 5, that talks about that we lay captive of thoughts. In the presence of God when you're worshiping, do you know your mind, your thoughts start uh, 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 disappearing? Because you get involved into moments of extended worship. And as you're worshiping the Lord, there are things that are being transformed and changed in you unknowingly. So I say, stop running after the world. This busyness is what has hindered us from engaging in the glory. And this is the thing. The world is doomed for destruction. So can you imagine, we are, that's why the TPT in Colossians 3 will tell us, don't get distracted by the things of this world. The world is getting distracted. No matter how much we are praying against the destruction of the world, read the scripture and read the prophecy. There is one preacher that I like very much. He says that, that you know, when people are talking about uh, global warming and global whatever, and he said, I go beyond there. The world is going to burn. So no matter what uh, strategies you bring to protect it, read the scripture. That's what it says. The world will end. It's, it's not, is it not in the scripture? Here we are. So why are we focusing on the world, the global warming, the, the climate, the water? The, it is in the scripture. Focus on heavenly realities because the heavenly realities say, as this world is coming to an end, a new earth is being formed. And who will be ruling us with Christ? So it's okay for us. If this earth map shifts, whichever direction it shifts, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't involve us. We are already on the path, on the trajectory of victory, whichever way it comes, isn't it? So we seek his presence. This is the thing. His presence breaks barriers. If you, are, if you tarry at the place of worship, you will find that you are breaking barriers that you have been uh, fighting with for too long. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. So that means because I'm tarrying in his presence and I'm seeking his presence, there are issues that cannot ordinarily be, be sorted. There is no natural remedy for some issues. But in the presence of the Lord, such barriers are broken. And you start seeing things in the light of the word of God. Let's go to Psalms 25, 14 in the Passion Translation. I really like this scripture. Every time I read it, I think it was written for me. You know, you have, you have the right to claim whatever scripture you want to claim. This is what that, uh, that uh, the scripture says. It says, there is a private place reserved for the devoted lovers of Yahweh where they sit near him and receive the revelation secrets of his promises. What more do you want? There is a secret. It's a private place. You know, it's like when people go shopping, I'm not a good shopper at all. In fact, I buy things that find me. If you tell me it's a shopping episode, I'm telling you it can take me an, an ear. One year to go to a shop to find something to buy. I don't. I, to me, I think it's, it's the most toilest job on earth. I, I just can't. Especially if you go and you find uh, rows of pink blouses. Then, I mean, and I'm like, how do you select? They all look the same. The minute I enter there, I get blindfolded. My shopping is tiny little shops. 
because when I go there, there may be a couple of things, and the one that attracts me, I only ask for my size. If they don't have my size, I don't try another one. So people who, if you're a sales lady and you sell clothes, I'm your customer, because I don't go shopping. They find me. And this is the thing. If you go to the malls where they, they sell expensive things, you know, like they sell rings and gold things and silver things, they usually have an outer glass. This outer glass, everybody can touch and try, because it costs 1000 3000 like that. There is another one. It's called the private room. The private room is the one that the people write checks to buy. It's, called a, it's a private place. I, I, I look at this scripture and I think that's how God has given us value. He says there is a private place reserved. It's not yours for the asking. It is reserved for the lovers of God, those who are devoted. How do you get devoted to God? You spend quality time in his presence. You value time with him. You prefer him more than the others. You're looking for opportunities to spend time with him, isn't it? So that means that glory is reserved for those who desire and seek after it. If you don't desire for glory, you can confess all you want. But it will not happen because there is a conduit that makes you an, a, 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 a qualified party to the glory. The blood has qualified us. This is the, the good thing. However, there is the manifestation that we have to seek. Otherwise, God will never have told us, seek. Once we got born again, everything you want, just go picking it. It's not, it's not that, you know, uh, buffet. It isn't. There is select. You go, but then that means you're craving for it. And because you're craving for it, you're doing what it requires to get it. And because you do, you get it. So that's number one. We seek his presence. Number two, we seek the, the knowledge of his word. That's wisdom. Proverbs says, you know, you're getting get understanding because it becomes a conduit to experience the glory. Matthew 13 says, verse 12, in the Amplified, Matthew 13, 12 says, so, so, yeah, 13, 12 in the Amplified, for whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given and he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. You know, some scriptures you read and you're like, why God? <laughs> I just keep adding. You understand? But this is what, this, this, you see, the kingdom of God operates very differently from the kingdom of this world. It says, for whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him, will more be given. So there is a criteria to be added more spiritual knowledge. Turn with me to Ezekiel 3.10. I think it's in the NLT. Ezekiel 3.10. The NLT. It says, then he added, this was God talking to uh, Ezekiel, and he says, son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Ponder. Let my words sink deep into your own heart first. This is where Paul was talking about work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because this is not about en mass. You understand? It's not a mass thing. This is a private party thing. It's an individual thing, isn't it? It's where you go with a card. So the, the, here is a God is saying, listen to them carefully for yourself. Really, there is a personal work here that each of us has to do to experience the glory. We thank God for the anointing of the house. 
And because of the anointing of the house, there are things that God by his mercies releases. But there is the threshold you cannot climb until you take the word for yourself. You listen to it for yourself. Don't listen to it to tell others. Let it transform you. Because once it transforms you, then others will read it through you. They will see it. They will see the effect. It will be uh, infectious. You understand? So here we see uh, uh, God was telling Ezekiel, receive revelation for your fa yourself first. Because you want to be a, a, a server in the kingdom of God, then you can only serve with the revelation that you possess, isn't it? Receive the revelation of you, for yourself first. What is revelation? Revelation is an enlightening or astonishing disclosure. To me, it sounds like the manifestation of the glory, isn't it? You know, it's astonishing. The things of the kingdom of God, when they happen, they astonish everybody. And that's why Jesus said that signs and wonders are what will invite the sinners to the kingdom of God. Because they are astonishing. It's extra, uh, extraordinary happening that are beyond the natural occurrences. Okay? Things like divine healing. Who can, how do you explain there was a mass of cancer and now it's gone. It's, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Things like divine prosperity. You were being kicked out by the landlord at the beginning of the year and now you, are, you own a property. Isn't it? People, this glory that, that God is asking us to apprehend, it's life transforming. It's a, and this is what is supposed, it's supposed to transform us in ways that you cannot explain. Yeah, it's when you, somebody kicked you out of their house and they expected you to go live in a slum. And God intervened somehow. And instead of going to the slum, you la landed in Runda. Isn't it? Supernatural. This glory is weighty. It's weighty, isn't it? Jesus said himself that many could not grasp the, these revelations. That is in Matthew 13. You remember where we read when the disciples asked him, Why, uh, how come you are talking to them in parable? And he said, they can't understand this. They, they are not able to grasp it. So Jesus said that many could not grasp this revelation, and therefore he had to speak to them in parables. It's for those who have spiritual understanding, and your spiritual understanding continues to grow. So therefore, none of us ever arrives. I'm a believer that will get to heaven and the classes will begin. So this is a tester, <laughs> isn't it? And therefore, here in Ezekiel 3.10, uh, God was telling Ezekiel, let. What is the definition of the word let? He, he told him, let the word sink deep in you. The word let is to cause or to make happen. You see, there is a work for Ezekiel to do. He is to cause and to make happen the word to sink deeply in him. Therefore, I say, if you don't give the word opportunity through constant use, it will not sink in you. So the let here that we are being expected to do is that you give the word opportunity. We give the word opportunity through reading it, through listening it, through confessing it, through believing it. Not just confessing. You know some people, some, some people make confessions of what they don't believe. They make confessions of what they had. That doesn't work. A confession of what you had doesn't work. The confession that works is what you are believing. You are fully persuaded. This word works. That's where you will have, the pastor keeps saying, let's don't talk about the job. If you want the job, go get the job. If you don't want the job, stay without the job. Everybody believes individually. It's a private matter, people. How we live is a private matter. But the glory is available to everybody. You understand? 
So spiritual skill, which is the word, results in abundance in the area you apply it habitually. Do you remember pastor talking about a lot about habitually? So it's not like you jump in, Susan, and tomorrow, the next three weeks you're away, then you jump in, oh, they stretch today, let's go. You know, it, it won't happen. It's a constant thing. You're, you're building the skill of the word, the knowledge. When uh, my, 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 my first job many years ago, when maybe majority were not born, <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, Leah. Where were you in 1981? 1981. You are in kindergarten. You see? I, was, I started working in May 1981, and I'm still growing strong. Isn't God amazing? Like Eric was not even nowhere. He's thinking, like, my son will call me, God, you're ancient. <laughs> but I'm still alive. Surviving is the grace of God. So my first job was a secretary. And the, 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 then days we used to do shorthand. You know, those funny things you write and then you transcribe. And so we, the teacher would tell us, shorthand is a skill. If you don't practice it, you lose it. It's like typing also. Typing is a skill. So the word, the knowledge of the word is a skill too. You don't apply it and you don't use it, you lose it. So you remain with the, the outline. <laughs> you know, the outline is the one we had in uh, Sunday school. And the songs we sang in Sunday school. They, they were good, but they are irrelevant at the levels that you are at. You graduate in the things of the Spirit, isn't it? Yeah. So you have to apply it habitually. Because, this is, why do we, am I emphasizing on this? And why is your pastor emphasizing on this? Because the devil capitalizes on ignorance. Hundred percent. He has no other weapon. The only weapon the enemy uses is ignorance. If you're ignorant of the word of God, you take it for granted. You stop exercising your faith. You think we have gotten there. We are cruising, so let's put our feet up. I will read the word on Sunday. I can guarantee you, you will not be attaining the glory. Because it requires habitual. It's habitual. What is a habit? It's something you do over and over and over and over until without you knowing, you do it. You understand? So it's habitual. Proverbs 9, 12, in the, in the NLT says, Proverbs 9, 12, if you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. I'm telling you the Bible is very personal. If you, be, if you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. If you scorn wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. So whose choice is it, Leah? Everybody gets to choose the life they live. Because this is the thing. God has given to all of us all that pertain to life and godliness. It's available. Because he will be unjust to say, you, I'll give you with this measure. And you. The only reason there is a measure is because of how desperate are you for. And your desperation for the word is what expands your measure. So you, you move from this uh, little glass to the, you progress. You know, some, some are in the containers. Some are overflowing, isn't it? There's a scripture in Psalm 16 that says that our cup runneth over. It will only run over to the extent you are working it. If you don't work it, in a car cool it in. When people come to check their life, is there something here? You understand? That's what the scripture is saying. If you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. So that you get to choose. Do you want the benefit or do you want to suffer? Because God has already done his work. You know, sometimes we go to God and keep crying. Please give. Please do. And he's like, guys, 2,000 years ago, I did it. It's over. Stop asking me to do what I'm asking you to do. Because people, you know, really, some people keep asking God to do what he's asking them to do. 
Because he said, please give me the money. And he's like, give and it shall come back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And you, you are like, God, please give. He's like, I don't have two strategies. The strategy is you give, you receive. Isn't it? It's as simple as that. Anyway, let's progress. So what are we looking at here? We are looking at developing a skill of the word. What does Colossians 2.6 say? Colossians 2.6 uh, to 7 in the Passion Translation, it says, In the same way you receive Jesus our Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you continually, as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way, for you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. There are strong words there, weighty words. How are you strengthened? By allowing the roots of your faith to go deep. How do they get deep? By the faith you have established, you have absorbed. You absorb the word. How do you absorb the word? By consistency, by habit, by determination, by sacrifice. Instead of sleeping 10 hours because they recommend 8 hours and you say, if 8 are good, 10 are better. That's it's not true. It isn't true. Those hours, use them to absorb the word, isn't it? The word you absorb enriches you and because it's a devotion to him, isn't it? So then it makes your root go deep and you become stable. So that no matter what the enemy throws at you, when he throws, it's bouncing. When he throws, there is a word. When he throws, there is a song. When he throws, I am in tongues. When he throws, you understand? You're surrounded by weapons of warfare. These weapons of warfare are spiritual activities. They are actions. God cannot call us to stand there and wait and keep praying help. Because he has given us the weapons of warfare. That's why we are called the believer's authority. We have authority over the kingdom of darkness. It doesn't matter the magnitude and the intensity that he will throw things at us. The word is stronger. It keeps repairing. It keeps uh, uh, interfering with the strategies, isn't it? So then, because our roots grow deep, we are enriched in his glory. Nothing separates us from the glory. So that was point two. The last point, then you pray. Because you came to pray. Point number three is we pursue godliness. We pursue godliness. What is godliness? Just godlikeness. If there is a word like that. You know, pastor says, I say some English words that he's not sure about. Even me, I'm not sure about some. I just find myself saying them. And, but somehow, when I go to the dictionary, I, I find them. <laughs> and then he says, you're picking unnecessary battles. I didn't say there was an obey. Actually, I didn't also know there is a word like obey. But when he said it, I checked it, and I was like, oh, there is a word obey. Anyway. So, uh, godliness is godlikeness. Go with me to Philippians 2. 13 in the NLT. Philippians 2 13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases you. Isn't that gratifying? To know that He did not just save us and delivered us and then told us, Guys, I'm out of here, you wage a good warfare. <laughs> if you win, well and good. If you lose, well, I did my part. See how gracious God is. He did not leave us unattended. It says here, he is working in us, giving you the desire. So each one of us has a seed of desire that is deep-seated within our spirits. We just need to stir it up. 
We start it up with worship. We start it up with the word. We start it up with prayer. We start it up in praying in tongues. You remember the, the, the word in the book of Jude? Build up your most holy faith by praying in tongues always, always, always. Praying in tongues always. So we work it out. He's saying that giving you the desire and the power. If he has given you the seed of the uh, uh, desire, and then he, em he is empowering you to do what pleases him, can you be in contradiction with him? No. Um, you know this pattern is not complicated. It's very simple. It just needs to be obeyed. If you obey the pattern, you just find yourself... See, the, the other problem that happens is that we want to leap from here to there. God is progressive. D don't shortchange the process. Remember the scripture in James that talks about <laughs> counted all blessings when you go through diverse temptations. and tri Most people don't like, <laughs> like it. Because, they, what? Trial? How can trouble? Why is that? How is it applicable? Yes, the scripture says it develops you. So don't short change the process. So the process that he's given you the seed of the desire, and then he has given you the power which is in your word, so that you may please him. It's like somebody telling you that I want you to do this for me, and here is the money to do it. How will you not do it? Unless. Somebody wrong at you. You understand? Really, it's not complicated. It's just that we have to be purposeful and refuse. Actually, the greatest thing that, the, uh, that deters us is the battle in the mind. Because we are thinking this is taking too long. Why? How? I thought it should come this way. Stop all the thinking. Take captive of your thoughts and agree with the word and work the process. And you will recognize you actually move swifter than you thought. And it will be quick. You will land there before you know. And you're like, hey, yeah, we got here. Because the process works. It's tailored to work. Isn't it? So then, in pursuing God-likeness, here then is uh, 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 our role. I see our role here as just to cooperate with what he's doing in us by his spirit and the word. So the word and the spirit, applying the word and the spirit, then we will become, we start to, uh, to please him. Be interested in what interests God. Because uh, one of the other things is that we want what God wants to give us, but we are not really interested with what he's interested in. We are looking at, I just want to have an outcome. But th this outcome has a process, and this process is God-likeness. God so be interested in what God is interested in. Prefer God versus people. I, I, really, don't be a, a people pleaser. Love people, but really, if they are dragging you a lot, you move on. But love them, but detach yourself and move on. Because you want to be interested in what God is interested in. Wherever you place attention, whatever you, you place attention to, it gets to be manifested in your life. Whether you like it, it's an automatic outcome. If my focus is on this, and my focus is on this, I wake up focusing on this, and eventually I will manifest that. If my focus is the glory, and my focus is I want to know you more, and I want to please you more, and I want to understand you more, and I want to know what is it that I'm not doing, and I am willing to be corrected and changed and, and rebuked and uh, whatever it takes, if you Attention is, I want to know God. You will manifest knowing God. Somehow. It's not tricky. Really. It isn't tricky. So then, refuse to participate in habits that bind you to sin. Remember habitually? Colossians uh, 3 says about that you habitually let your mind, uh, thoughts think about heavenly realities. Then, if you are to become godlike, 
then refuse to participate in habits that bind you to sin. Because habits that bind you to sin are very earthly and eventually they will be under the earth. Do you know that? That bottomless pit will not be on this surface. <laughs> we will be ruling here in those years. A thousand years. Kuna hatu watakuwa huko chini lakini hawako hapa. You understand? Yeah, so refuse to, you know, there are things that you can't be fighting from two, 2001 to 2040. Isn't it? Simple things, habits that you have refused to let go. Just let them go. And you will recognize, hey, yeah, we are progressing in this thing about knowing God soon, easier. Change, change is effortless. Changing from sinful to righteous uh, uh, trajectory is effortless. It's just the word and the spirit. The word and the spirit. The word and the spirit. And you recognize all those habits are gone. You don't have to do it with your natural ability. It's just the word focus on the word and the spirit. Okay? So then, serve God with joy. You want to be God-like? Serve God with joy. Because God is looking for those who will serve him with the joy because they understand this is our father's inheritance. And if, if you are a, a, a core inheritor with Christ, then it is it's, it's your, what do you call it? It's your urithi. What do you call urithi in English? All you English people. Eh? Inheritance. Uh, I had already seen it. It's your inheritance. So serve it. You cannot shortchange yourself. You understand? You shouldn't shortchange yourself because when you're mismanaging the things of the kingdom, who are, who are you mismanaging? It's not, it's not God. God can leave you and create another one somewhere. Yeah. So it's you. It's yours. Once you recognize it's yours, you will handle it with the utmost care and you will do it joyfully because it's like if you invest somewhere, if you invest uh, in a bank or whatever investment project it is, would you be uh, waking up and say, Naim Jengo, what are you to me? Are you really interested in the investment of, that you put in? You're not. Or would you be, then withdraw. Because you're not joyful about the investment, so why should you benefit from the investment? You understand? It's the same principle in the kingdom. If you, if you understand this is the kingdom of God and you have a part in this inheritance, I'm telling you, you'll be waking up the earliest to say, what can I do for this kingdom? Because the benefits and the proceeds come to you. You eat the dividends of it. Isn't it? You are the partaker of the dividend if you serve the kingdom correctly. Okay? So tonight, are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Yeah, we want to pray. I want us to pray focusing, and I like us to pray for ourselves. We'll still pray for the nation, but uh, let's uh, just focus our praying on these things that I believe the Holy Spirit uh, gave me as I was preparing. I want, uh, and, and the prayers is we are laying hold of his glory. So the prayers we are making in utterances of the spirit is that we increase in our time in his presence. Let's believe God to show us where to increase our time in his presence so that we reduce the natural activities and we add time to our, our, our time of worship or prayer before the Lord that we come up in our hearing. You know, it takes hearing to become and to comprehend, that we come a notch higher in our hearing and that we come up in our focus in the word. We believe God that there is a focus that is increased of the word of God in each of us so that we are now, uh, remember the scripture we read that he who has spiritual knowledge, more will be given. So let's believe God for more spiritual knowledge, okay? That means we, we, are, we, we are increasing in our belief of the word. You know, you can really be a, a confessor of the word and you don't believe it. And therefore, you will have no results. And you keep wondering, what does it not work? The, the secret is, are, are you really believing this word? 
Is, is, it, is it convicting you that this word is forever settled in heaven? Or because then that means you're not weighing the word versus the natural things because they are not comparable. You can't bring the word to that low level of maybe I'll try this if this doesn't work. You see, that's confusing the word with the natural things. And we also want to come up in our fruit bearing. We want to come up come up in our fruit bearing. So we want to believe for victory faith, LFI, and our homes, and each of us personally, that there is a, a, a fruit bearing that is at a higher notch. And if there are some of us who are lagging behind, we want to believe God to accelerate so that we can catch up. Isn't it? Yeah. So we want to pray basically for ourselves tonight, laying hold of the glory. I hope you caught the, the things that we need to pray for. And therefore, I'll ask you to stand up. We pray together. Do you have that, 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 that song ready? The, the good people over there. We'll sing, we'll sing this song of worship. And then we, we just, just believe God for utterances to focus. And don't let your thoughts wander. Don't let, because that's, I remember I say that is what the enemy uses most. Because he wants you to be ignorant. He, he tries to, you, for your thoughts to wander. We are focusing on the presence of God. Because we are asking God to shift us from this level to this level. Let our hearing come higher. Let our comprehension of the word come higher. Let our fruit bearing come higher. Let our time, our, uh, the time we spend in your presence come higher. So that we can start to see uh, an evident manifestation of the glory of God. Amen. So if you can stand up with me, we'll believe God together. We'll sing this song, and then we pray, and then I'll ask a couple of people to come and make declarations. There are utterances of the Spirit within each one of us. If you purpose not to be a spectator and engage, engage the things of the kingdom. Scripture says that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violent. The violent take it by force. So if I know you've had a long day wherever you have been, but that has nothing to do with praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is the language that supersedes the feelings and this, the, the body, how the body feels. If we engage in the spirit, we can believe God to shift us a notch higher. Amen. Hallelujah to our mighty God. Hallelujah to our great God. Oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your masses that are new every morning over each one of us, oh God. We thank you for the masses that help us, oh Lord, to understand and comprehend who you are and what you are to us, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God, because you say that, oh Lord, our God, that your word is forever settled in heaven. And you've told us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Oh Lord, our God, your word is our desire. Your word is our heartbeat. Your word is what we desire for, oh Lord. Your word is what we seek after. Your word is what we crave for, oh Lord, our God. We have a longing for your word. Create within us, oh God, a longing for your heart. You say that you've given us a seed of, your, of the desire to know you better, that we may please you in all that we do. How can we please you except we are worshippers? Your word tells us that we be worshippers, oh God, that we worship you in spirit and in truth. Truth is your word, oh God. So without your word, we cannot worship you in truth and in spirit. So Lord, I'm praying for my brethren tonight that we desire your word, that we run after your word, that we seek after your word, oh God. So, Father, we confess tonight, oh God, that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of our calling, what is the richness of your glory in the saints of God, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe. We call ourselves believers. We believe the word. 
we believe the word of God, when we confess the word of God, we don't do it as a cliche. We are believers of the word of God. And therefore, Father, tonight we declare our hearing is coming higher. Our hearing is going higher, oh God. There are instructions, oh God, that we ought to have achieved by now. Because when you spoke and you say in the book of Acts, oh God, the greater things shall we do than that which you did. Lord, it is not you who did not speak the truth. It is us who have not yet comprehended the magnitude of the release of your glory. But we are those, oh God, that have understood your will, O oh Lord, and we are seeking after the revelation, the manifestation of things that will astonish us, oh God. Lord, we believe you because we know there is nothing that is impossible with you. So tonight, our God, we declare, we hear by the Spirit of the Lord. We do not negate little instructions that your Spirit will give to us because in obeying little instructions then we are progressing and are allowing the roots of our faith to go deeper, oh God. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith in the world that we are living in we can only overcome by the Word of God because the world as we know it is coming to an end the things that we watch happening, oh God, they are signs of the end times. And I pray for my brethren, oh God, and the congregation of this church, oh God, that none of us who have sat under the word in this body for years will be left behind. Father, we are asking, prepare us for your day. Prepare us for your glory. Prepare us, oh Lord, our God, even as our pastor has been exhorting us, that we serve you, oh God, in the strength and in the mind and in the pro uh, 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 purposes and the processes that you have laid before us, oh God. So, Father, tonight we declare we are fruit bearers in the name of Jesus. We bear fruit in our homes. We bear fruit in our businesses. We bear fruit in our offices. We bear fruit with our lifestyles, oh God. We are God-like in all that we do, oh God. We refuse to be detoured and to be distracted by the things that are natural, things that are of no value. God, we prefer you. We prefer you. We place value on you more than any other. We prefer you, our God. David prayed and said that a day in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand days out there. Because out there, there is only confusion and chaos and oppression. But in the house of the Lord, which is the word of the Lord, and which is the temple that we are, carriers of the anointing of God, we continue to dispense. Everywhere we go, we dispense the anointing of the glory of our God. We cannot have an offense in us because because sin cannot dwell where your glory dwells. So we declare and we call ourselves vessels of God that can carry the anointing of God, that hate any habit of sin. We are sin haters. By faith tonight we declare we are sin haters and everything that is associated with the kingdom of darkness, we reject it, we refuse it, oh God. We take on the character of God because that's what you've called us to walk in, oh God. Father, we declare this morning, that this evening, God, that your word tells us in the second Corinthians 1, you say these things remain, faith, hope, and love. We are those, oh God, that are carriers of your faith. We have hope irrespective of how things present themselves. We never lose grip of faith, of hope, because we know he who promised is faithful to accomplish. You said that he who began a good work, he is faithful to complete it. And there is nothing he cannot do. Therefore, we walk in the unity of faith. We love each other because you call us in your word in Ephesians, you say that in that house, which house? The house of faith. The house of believers. The house of those who will walk in unity. In that house dwells the full of your glory. Your glory, oh God, is in the spiritual realm. It's waiting for a united body to show up and astonish 
not just us, but those who watch us, oh God. Therefore, we confess tonight, oh God, that we are walking in the unity of purpose, oh God, that your word is bearing fruit in us, and we are affecting and infecting others, infecting them, oh God, with the gospel of the good news. How grateful we are, oh Lord, our God, for the souls that continue to get born again, even in this ministry, and even in this nation, oh God, populating the kingdom of God, and destroying the kingdom of death. Darkness. We thank you, our Father, because your word is clear to us that says, Pray to the God of the harvest for laborers, because the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I declare in the name of Jesus that out of this congregation, laborers, willing laborers, that will serve their God with joyness and gladness in the name of Jesus. Therefore, our Father, we declare that we are filled with the joy of the Lord and we look towards your return oh God and we do so with anticipation for your word say godliness with, uh, with contentment is great gain we are contented with you our father because only you mean much to us everything else fails before you our father we value you we regard you we seek after you we will spend time with you oh God our time with you is more more prominent than anything else. This is not the days, oh God, where we can play games. These are the days of serious kingdom business. And therefore, our Father, we are those who are found praying and interceding, even for nations, oh God. Father, tonight we declare we want to spend time with you, that you can catch us up and fast track us and accelerate, oh God, where we may have lapsed, oh God. If there be found anything wanting among us tonight, we speak the blood. We apply the blood. We apply the blood of Jesus over our minds, over our thought lives, over our desires, over our priorities. We apply the blood of Jesus tonight. It is the highest atonement. It has already atoned for us. Therefore, we can boldly come before you. Oh God, commune with the Holy God. What a calling this is, oh God. Father, we thank you for energizing us and enabling us, oh God, and causing us to represent your kingdom in the way that you've called us to. So, Father, tonight we go home, oh God, knowing that you've given us another opportunity to lay hold of the glory manifested among us, oh God. We pray for our, our pastors. We pray for Pastor Carla and Pastor Davis, oh God, and Miss Tina and the leaders of this ministry, oh God. We pray for them that they hear by the Spirit because we know as they hear by the Spirit that there is nothing that will be sent from the kingdom of darkness that can override the plan of God, the plan of this uh, ministry and the calling of this ministry go forth unhindered because the blood of Jesus is applied and therefore we thank you for our pastors oh God our father they are led of the spirit we know that and they are strengthened by the spirit and they are running the cause of, of their calling even with tenacity and we are following that oh God we are the Joshua to our Moses we are not those oh God who linger and hinder we are those who enable and energize by our prayers and our works of faith we declare multiplication over LFI and VFC by the word of the Lord tonight we declare increase we are looking forward to crossing the threshold of the supernatural manifestation of the graces and the anointing of supernatural divine healings in the name of Jesus supply of your blessings in levels that are not known before father we thank you tonight and we honor you for all that you're doing we give you thanks oh god we appreciate every person that has come to pray tonight may they reap the benefit of their obedience tonight oh god we thank you we bless you tonight we want to pray for the nation oh joshua
glorify your holy name. We continue to acknowledge you as God of our lives and of our families and of our nation, Kenya. We give you praise and we give you glory. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, For we have come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. We have come to God, the judge of all men. We have come to the spirit of just men made perfect, who are written in heaven. We have come to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. It speaks healing. It speaks divine protection. It speaks, it speaks uh, divine provision. It speaks divine guidance for us. We speak the blood of the nation of Kenya. We speak the blood of our families in the name of Jesus. We speak the benefits of redemption over this nation in the name of of Jesus Christ. You have said in your word in Hebrews 9 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, the Lord Jesus Christ entered into the holy place once, having obtained eternal redemption for us. We appropriate this victory that was wrought on the cross of Calvary. We appropriate it of our lives. We appropriate it of our families. We appropriate it of our nation, Kenya. In the name of Jesus Christ. We decree upon our president and his cabinet and the leaders all the way down to the local chief. We decree, we decree your guidance upon them in the name of Jesus. You have said that the heart of the king is in the hands of God and you turn it in whatever direction that you please. We pray that you turn the direction of the hearts of our leaders to favor your cause over this nation in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let it favor peace. Let their hearts be turned towards peace. Let their hearts be turned towards reconciliation. Let their hearts be turned towards development. Let their hearts be turned towards progress. Let their hearts be turned towards education. Let their hearts be turned towards health care. Let their hearts be turned towards infrastructure. Let their hearts be turned towards developing the economy in terms of businesses in the name of Jesus Christ. And we decree prosperity over Kenya. May the glory of God fill Kenya. May the countenance of the Lord shine upon us. May everything that we touch to do prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. You have, you, have, you have put us in your prophetic calendar as a nation. We pray that, Lord, this country will be a springboard of the gospel even to other nations of the world in the name of Jesus. We pray for peace with our neighbors. We pray for favor with our neighbors. We pray for favor with our alliances. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree divine protection within our borders. We decree peace within our borders. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the presence of the Lord that your servant has talked about this evening be in our midst and in our nation, dismantling and destroying every works of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the fivefold ministry. We thank you for teachers of your word. We thank you for pastors. We thank you for evangelists. We thank you for prophets. We thank you for apostles. We thank you for all who minister to your people before you. Continue to enable them and to anoint them by your spirit. We worship you and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. <laughs>